Hey, on this episode of The Engaging Marketeer, I've got a bit of a rant, as you were probably expecting. Um, recently, I took to Twitter, or X, as Elon Musk has now decided to call it, and I found it to be the worst cesspool of disgusting human beings in the entire galaxy. Now, I don't know if you're a Twitter user, or if you abandoned Twitter when Elon took over, but Twitter was never particularly good. It was always airing on the right wing of society. You know, those people that would be pulling up the ladder of people getting before them. Those people that were all anti-immigrants. They were anti-people on the sick. They were anybody that's claiming benefits. They should all be destroyed. Those sort of people that were on Twitter. But there was sort of a balance. There were other people that were good on Twitter. And then, of course, Twitter started blocking uh, those awful accounts, you know, like, like Donald Trump, for example, kicking the really bad people off that would say the most abhorrent things. But then when Elon Musk took over and rebranded it as X, one of the things that Elon did to make Twitter more engaging, more exciting and more sociable was to bring all of those blocked banned accounts back. So the real nasty people are on Twitter again. And when you used to say things on Twitter that quite frankly were disgusting, once the tweet got reported, Twitter would take it down and would quite often block the account. Now it doesn't do that. So you can pretty much say whatever you want on Twitter. If you've not used Twitter, I'm not selling it to you here, am I? It's not something you're going to want to go on to, and quite frankly, nor should you. But there is one good thing Twitter is for, and that is engagement-baiting morons. Now, bear with me, bear with me. Uh, over this last weekend, because the, the date this was recorded is the 3rd of May, so we're talking the weekend before the 3rd of May, we've just had an election in the UK, uh, I, <laughs> I took to Twitter to post a leaflet that had come through my door representing a political candidate for one of the local elections. Now, this is from a, a party called the Party of Women, POW, ironically. And there's five or six of them standing across the UK, so they're not a big party, and they were only started a, a few weeks ago by some, quite frankly, transphobic, right-wing, bigoted woman. And this leaflet they put through the door had lots of transphobic slurs on it, essentially saying that trans women aren't women, they're men. And they shouldn't be allowed in women's spaces because they are men. In itself, is transphobic. And I posted this on Twitter and showed that it was transphobic. I was then attacked by, oh, let's say, several hundred, several hundred bigoted transphobes who just bombarded me with abuse constantly for a week. And it just went on and on. This tweet that I originally put on actually generated over 300,000 views at the point of today when I looked at it. It's like 302, 303,000 views because they just keep having a go at it. I've even been, <laughs> I've been laid into by former Olympic swimmer and gladiator Sharon Davis, because Sharon is a known transphobe. Now, without going into the, the political aspect of, of transgender and, and bigots and stuff like that, Sharon takes this stance from a sporting point of view, because obviously when men trans, transgender into women, and they continue doing sports like, like swimming, for example, they have an advantage over somebody that was born female. Now, I can understand what Sharon's coming from there. I can get it. And in some ways, I can empathise with that because they do have an advantage over women. And I, I'm genuinely not sure what the actual right thing to do there is. Maybe there should be a different category for sport. I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. But the solution is absolutely not to go around the streets posting leaflets into people's door saying that trans women are not women. Now, this is where the key, this is, this is the thing. If I put this on Facebook or on LinkedIn, none of this would have happened. None of what happened would have happened. But because I put it on Twitter, where there are no rules about what you can and can't say, and accounts are anonymous, so you have fake names, fake profiles, fake locations. You can put your location as Earth, for example, and fake pictures. Nobody is held accountable for what they say. Nobody 
actually has to justify what they say or can end up in a court of law for it because Twitter is completely anonymous. Or so they think. Or so they think. Of course it isn't, because I did literally write the book on tracing fake profiles. And I'll pop a link for that below this podcast, actually, so you can see it. I wrote the book on tracing fake profiles. I also delivered TEDx talk on tracing fake profiles. You think they'd have known that. But these these anonymous trolls, because that is what they are, these anonymous trolls, then set about attacking me because I was pointing out that this was transphobic. Their first issue was that the word transphobia doesn't exist. That phobia comes from the Greek, which means fear. They are not fearful of them. Therefore, transphobic is a made up word. It's a made up word. All fucking words are made up. That's how words work. Language evolves. We make words up, we change the meaning. That's how it works. So you cannot say that it's not what it means, what we say it means, because that is the meaning that it is. And then they say, no, it's not bigoted because they are not women. They are not a minority. Therefore, we can pick on them because they are men. No, that is bigoted. You are denying their exist, their right to exist. That is the meaning of transphobic, you absolute fucking trolls. So that was the initial argument. But then, when obviously you can't explain this to them because there's, there's hundreds of them at the same time, all bombarding you with the same messages. And I'll put a link to this tweet below this podcast as well so you can go and have a look at that. Scroll through it, you'll absolutely love it. Jesus Christ. They then started going back through the history of my tweets, going back, what was we, 20, 2024 now, I think I joined Twitter 2029, so they're, they're going back 15 years worth of tweets. And every single thing that I said that they thought, ooh, that's a bit edgy. They're pulling it out and pasting it. It's like, look at him, he's a misogynist, he's a prick, he's homophobic. I got, old, I got called homophobic. Do you know I got called homophobic because I was in favor of trans rights? And if you're in favor of trans rights, that means you believe that a man shouldn't be gay, he should be trans instead, therefore you're homophobic. Work that one out. Eh? Work that one out. But yes, I got called homophobic because of that. They're going through tweets that I put up 15 years ago. Like, I, I quoted Mock the Week, for example. There was some, some gag on Mock the Week about, is somebody going to hit that kid about a restaurant and a kid running around? It might have been Ed Gamble or something. But I quoted that on Twitter. I thought it was hilarious. And I got pulled up on that, saying, oh, look, he's threatening to punch kids in restaurants. It's like, what the fuck? What the absolute fuck, you people are incredibly naive and stupid. Then there was another one uh, where I tweeted at someone whose, whose account doesn't exist anymore. They deleted it. I tweeted at them, I sent you my penis. Now, I, for the life of me, can't remember what that was. I think it was like 2014. Cannot remember that that was. But I can be fairly certain that I did not actually send somebody my penis. I'm pretty sure I didn't do that. I just tweeted it. There was some kind of reference. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was most outlandish things you can say to things. Maybe it was what did Lawrence Fox say in his memoir. I don't know. I genuinely don't know what that was. But then that was repeated at me over and over again to everything that I said. With this one particular fake troll account going back and forth and pasting and pasting and pasting and pasting. I have had thousands of responses. Thousands of responses from these absolute bigoted transphobic morons trying to somehow claim that I am a bigot, that I am a homophobe because I am defending trans rights. As I say, if this had been Facebook, this would never have happened. Because people who say these things, who have these views, do not go online and post them with their own name, with their own identity. Because they know you can't get away with that. They know it's wrong. They know in their hearts that if they say this stuff with their own name, they're going to get into some serious shit. LinkedIn, it would have been the same thing. Not a chance would they have done this on LinkedIn, where their employer could see it where their friends could see it, where their family could see it. No, they do it on Twitter, where it's anonymous. And speaking of employers, they even took to Engage Web. They started re replying to tweets from Engage Web, posting abuse at me. 
One even did it this morning, tweeted at Engage Web and saying, does this guy still work for you? No, I don't work for Engage Web. I own it, but you know, shut up, you daft bastard. So what's the point of this podcast? I don't bloody well know. The point of this podcast is stay the fuck away from Twitter because quite frankly, it is the worst the worst cross-section of humanity that you're ever going to see. There is very little that is good about it. There are, it doesn't matter what you say, what standpoint you come in, there is always someone to go on there and abuse you and take advantage of you and try and twist what you say. And because it's anonymous, because they're all troll accounts and because Elon Musk allows it, there is nothing that can be done to stop it. Unless I happen to have a bit more time and I decided to trace one of these accounts and out their identity. <sighs> I'm, I'm leaning. I tell you, I'm leaning, but I'm probably not going to do that because that does require a bit of effort. And I have better things to do. Genuinely, I know it might not look like it. I've got better things to do. So, oh, apologies for this podcast. This has been a party political <laughs> announcement on why you shouldn't use Twitter. Stay away from it. It is not business orientated. It is just for arguing with people. But it does get you cracking engagement. It really does get you cracking engagement. And I'll see you on the next podcast.